what really what really is good taste, right? Um, if I work with someone and I say, hey, we should make an electronic song, and someone else says, oh, we should make an orchestral song, like who's right? You know, it's it's a taste question, and these things can't really be explained rationally in many ways. It's just based on individual taste, and if you want to trust someone else's taste over your own, you know. You can hire as many all-stars and rock stars and geniuses as you want, but the better the relationship is that you have with someone you work with creatively, the better your work will be. If you don't have relationships and trust, then it's just going to be a huge clusterfuck. What's up? Sam, she's gonna work on the Moomoo Moo video. She's from uh, London. Whoa! Yes. Awesome. Yeah, I'll dig up some of the old, old, uh, some of the old what? sketches. There were, there were early sketches. Do we have any? Uh, do you have some of the video already? No, no, no. 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 Or, yeah, it's it's I mean, basically today was like we get the budget approved a few days ago. Oh, okay. Right. See, Mumu is a sad zombie who became separated from his zombie parents and never found them again. Cursed with immortality, Mumu lives forever as a weepy <laughs> child wrapped in what appears to be toilet paper. Small, sad looking, with puffy eyes, slow and smelly but surprisingly strong, always looks sad and dejected, small body, big head. Okay, so that was like 2008, or what was that? 2000, yeah, maybe 2007 even. Oh wow, two years before the game even came out? Yeah, it's a simple metaphor and it's gone a long way. It's good, he's getting his own music video. It kind of just happened. Yeah, and I think he's a good vessel for it, like I said, he's maybe just stories that are told, you know, maybe all over in terror, and you're right, like he's a good canvas for it. A boy in any nation, you know, so he could, he could be from Damasio or Fred Jordan. Um, Mumu for sure is the most expensive thing that we've done as a music team um, that has no purpose. Literally, there's, there's, there's no business incentive. There's like no, there's like no, you know, there's no like promotional campaign tied to it or whatever. The, the sole purpose is to do something cool for our players, you know? And beautiful. In this video, that's kind of the only thing that we have to nail, which is him as a character, how our players know him, because obviously we wouldn't want to disappoint them. Yeah, like a Mundy and Bandit, like our character's still going to be pretty much based on your character. You know, maybe like everything he interacts with is avoiding him. I don't know, does that make sense? Yeah. Did, that, did that represent it correctly? And Mumu is such an old character. Players have known the champion for a long time, which means that there's certain expectations. I don't want to disappoint our players, you know. So this was the original... This was my take on it, you know? This one creeps me out. <laughs> yeah, the, the holes in his yeah. eyes. He's a nasty little dude. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, the, you know, Mumu is Mumu. Like, we, we can't really change him as a character. Yeah. We shouldn't. Um, okay. Cool. See you, see you guys. Bye, Christian. See ya. Bye, guys. <laughs> it's like, all right, the contract signed. We're going to spend a huge amount of money on this music video and has to be the best music piece you've ever made but you haven't even written anything yet can you tell us kind of what what the stage of the music is the music already recorded is it written is it there's no music right now no. no music it's all in my head it's music so you can't predict how it ends up so it's just like ah i have to actually figure it out now you know um and we'll see i mean yeah we'll see i don't know yet I feel like he's a complex situation for our game and our world because people are like, well, how does he fit in and this and that? Mm -hmm. But, like, I feel like he's actually, he's a metaphor per se, you know, that he fits anywhere, you know? There's, there's so much to be done with this character. Mumu is an exploration. You know, it's... I don't know if it will be successful.
the music team at Riot Games started back in the day just with me kind of noodling around on login screen music tracks. On our music team we have Alex Temple, who's a composer, Sebastian Ajean, also composer, Mike Berry, also composer, me, also composer, Dan, um... I might be stretching my knowledge on the subject just because I haven't been here that long. I've only been here two months, you know, so... That's fine. Be as liberal and as uncensored as humanly possible. We all have different strengths on our team. Alex Temple, for example, phenomenal in the traditional sense. Young, handsome composer. <laughs> that was kind of weird. First CD I ever bought was, uh, well, I didn't buy it, but it was Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. My dad gave it to me. I was uh, five, I think. <laughs> And my parents had to have a rule that I was only allowed to listen to one hour of music a day because apparently I was trying to listen to too much. Sebastian has a really good idea for how to weave electronic music into orchestral pieces. He actually used to work for Hans Zimmer's team. The first album I bought was the soundtrack for The Rock by Hans Zimmer. I was, well, I was 10 when I got really interested in film music and I started actually using computers to like make music when I was about 11. Mike Berry, a very, very classically trained classical pianist, and really good opinions. I like being around people who are really good at things and feel like they're not, because they're always trying to get better. My first love in music before classical was, was rap, um, going back like the Dre and stuff. Those are the first CDs I got taken away as a child. Dan also is a composer, pretty fresh on the team, and helps us with um, a lot of production aspects. I'm not sure exactly how, but ended up with this video on my computer right now, and so I'm writing music for it. I mean, uh, since I'm new, like you know, there, I, my schedule is a little more open, so I said, you know, I've got some time, I can, I can work on that. It kind of started with me, but I am probably the worst out of all of our composers, as a composer in the traditional sense. But at the same time, I probably know our game and our players best. We have Perlman, Tchaikovsky, I don't know what the hell that is. Dvorak, Nat King Cole, Love Zeppelin number three, that's Zeppelin number two, Frank, so obviously. <laughs> One of the core ideas of League of Legends is you have these unlikely champions coming from all different realms and genres and times and inspirations and they kind of come together in a really cohesive manner. And that to me is the most interesting thing about League and also about the way that we approach music. If you know your strengths, but even more important, your limitations, then you can really work well together with the team. If you have a very sober way of thinking about your team, I think you can achieve things that are way greater than yourself. I keep finding myself worrying about like what your piece, like what what your piece is, and making sure I'm giving you the I right know, stuff. I know it's, it's random. Don't worry about the cameras. Just t tell us what you know. Right. Um. Oh, so this is um, this is Pan, uh, one of our crazy artists. Hi. How's it going? And he's working on the uh, Pentakill art piece. And no one, no one has seen this, or no? No, no. This is. I mean, he's still working on it. Can you give uh, Sona a mustache? Yeah, for sure. Uh, <laughs> a little <laughs> Chinese style. <laughs> I like it, like a curly one. Oh, it's for rat hair. It's <laughs> a great <laughs> mustache. Oh, yeah. Yay! Well, it looks pretty. It's actually pretty legit now. Wow. Heavy metal. <laughs> Heavy metal. Yeah. Oh, I didn't make different layer. Uh oh. I can't get rid of it. Uh, <laughs> oh no. Yes. Pentakill originated as this sort of alternate reality where certain characters in the game played in a band together. And that was enough for a while. And then years later, the music team had this notion of, sure, why not? Like, why not have those guys play in a band? Why not bring that band together and drop an EP? That note especially, that one. That's always a little, no, it's always, it's always a little flat. Like, 
the original idea that was so open, you know what I mean? It was like, well... First, first half, you're obviously way behind. You know what? Come out of here. <laughs> Stop me in my motion. I think the second half, you can actually be a little more on the um, on the quarter notes, kind of grooving. Because right now, you're rushing. But just one more time. Too much shred, man. I personally felt like it was gonna start as a joke, but it's sort of taken a life of its own. The quality and the craft that's going into that EP is actually really mind-blowing. Danny Lohner is a musician. He used to be part of Managed Nails and the Perfect Circle and you know, some really cool alternative industrial stuff. So we're working with him uh, on, on one song for the Pentakill album. <laughs> that is creepy. <laughs> What's that sword on the wall? Excalibur. Slade, four people on stage. Look at this guy. Flying mouth. You got that tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> you put craftsmanship, like this thing is just like, I mean, you should look at this wood, you know, it's like, it's just this complete brutal machine. <laughs> and all the other ones you can tell are kind of finished in like a... <laughs> What's going on up there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's just noodle around, right? Korean yeah. people are funky. What's up, Seinfeld? <laughs> <laughs> is the track she's singing on, is that the one they have a character that's a little punk rocker chick? Jinx? Yeah. She's fucking hot. <laughs> the character? Yes. Oh, she looks like your type of girl. Oh, fuck you! <laughs> Jinx, is that her name? Jinx? Yeah, Jinx. I met the girl who, who designed her when I went when I Oh, Katie. Oh, Katie. Yeah. yeah. Cool chick. I made her sound effects. Oh, for, for that? Yeah, for that character, yeah. Oh, right. Along, along with this She's dude. Cute though, that little character. Do you want to play Christian Trinity? You want to play... I don't care, you can play. You're a better player. Uh, we are right now here in uh, Denny Loner's house. And we're just messing around with all sorts of... Uh, all, all sorts of sounds and ideas, and we'll probably record some stuff with Jason. That's literally it. Like, no preconceived idea. Just, like, do some heavy... Riffy kind of shit that I can fuck with. The most rewarding thing about working at Riot is the collaboration aspect. If you don't feel that magic, then you're really not doing it right. That's what kind of what we're all here for. We started pretty much like every other video game, just with you know orchestral music, which is awesome. I mean, it's my favorite music. But if you now want to do something with character and that's like iconic, you have to cross borders. You have to fuse things that might not work out on the paper. You know, now we're at a point where we can work with maniacs like Danny, and uh, <laughs> and um. <laughs> 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 Uh, you could do remixes wise. of that one too. Huh? Mm -hmm. You could put out like Pinnacle or whatever. Re release a lot of the League of Legends music. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like um, the orchestral stuff. No, that's that's what, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make a soundtrack, like the first volume, basically. What makes it interesting too is that we could do the Pinnacle remix or whatever. Whatever's cool. Even the fucking Christian Michael too. Basically, we are starting to work on the Momo music video, mm -hmm. and, um, and obviously that also needs a music piece. We talked about it for months and months, but it took a while for me to actually start to work on it. No, I'm fucking rusty, but anyway. I never felt like I actually have the right idea what it should feel like. I wrote some lyrics, basically, that um, that had some, some very, you know, bare-bones stuff. So, for example, I recorded basically some piano part that kind of felt like it, it, it would hit the right tone. Shit, my pedal's loose. I gotta do that again. What the fuck just happened? God damn it, fucking pedal. Oh. So there's that. Nope. I 
always wonder how many of our players know that Christian used to be in a in a German like rock band and that you can go online and, and Google his name and literally find drawings that 12 year old girls did in notebooks because we knew him for a couple years before that fact came out, and it was almost like he had been living this weird double life that he didn't want to know us to know about. It's like amazing like composer, and then there's like the teenage heartthrob Christian that has little hearts drawn around him. Christian started at Riot Games in player support, answering billing issues for German players. And he joined Riot because he's a big gamer, right? And he loved League of Legends, but he never talked about his past in a cool band. And then ultimately, the company started to figure out that Christian's got all this musical talent, and we didn't really have a music department at the time. So gradually, Christian started composing, and over time, that evolved into us taking a lot of musical risks. For me, this is a very interactive, collaborative world. We're just given blank pages, and we just have to translate that into music. Every bar, every decision that's made needs to be based on what works for that character, and what does that character feel like? It's you with this piece of music. You really want it to sound like something that you'd enjoy listening to and that someone else might share the same experience with. We're all gamers. We're all nerds, you know? What's leading the album? Uh, Demacia is going to be the first track? Yeah. I think it works really well. It works better than Nami? Yeah. I think Nami should be the second yeah. one. So it's like diversity, you know? Now we have seven songs done. Everybody should listen to the masters on there. Yeah, all right. Let's take a listen. That was good. Do you guys like that better than the I think the second violins are a little flat. Uh, and Mike, we had one note that from about 45 on, the choir gets pretty big, so we can probably have them play out a little bit more. All right. Today we're recording six pieces of the soundtrack here at the Sony scoring stage. A lot of people. A lot of people. Sir, I didn't know you were going to be here. Good to see you. Good to see you, sir. You doing okay? Yeah, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm excellent. Christian? Sir? Nice to see you. Okay, hey, Mark. Right, Noah? Good to see you. Good to see you, too. What's happening? Well, the, the usual. Hey, good to see you. It's good to see you, too. Back we are. Back we are. So we, are we doing NAMI again today? Getting some sleep? Yeah, I slept like seven hours last night. My God. That hasn't happened That's like forever. sleeping gluttony. I know, right? <laughs> so um, right now, we basically have the best you can get on every instrument. So all the guys that play in all the movies are here. We could spend a lot of money during the recording session, get all these instruments, and they make a, a big ruckus. But if the vibe isn't right, then we've failed in our job. Why I like our game as a player is because it is so diverse. The champions in our game are all very different. They all have a very different background. Every piece has to be in like, its little sub-universe. And it doesn't just associate with characters. With Demacia, we had a lot of things going for us just by looking at the map. It's a noble world. Hopefully the music paints a picture of the lifestyle of being a being from a, from a noble culture and spreading justice around the world. This is going to be like the signature chart for the next like uh, series of music, hopefully. All right, let's go for a take. Here's bar one. For one, two.
Okie dokie. What do you think, Barry? Yeah, nice having I think it's okay. But Alex, what do you think? Um, I really like the way it sounds when it's down an octave, but I wonder how it's going to sound when we add the choir that's going to be above it. They can also come in a little stronger at 29, and not too, you know, not... All right, let's hear more of the moving people. Okay. I mean, the cellos and the violins, too. We have a recording session tomorrow night with um, Mark, who's a violinist, and Cameron, who's a cellist, really great player. So we have to arrange the piece. And for that, I, I just need more brain than just mine to figure it out, you know? I mean, the, the Jinx um, music video was the first music video that we created. The logical consequence of like a you know, really successful um, project like that is obviously, let's do more. Going from the Jinx music video to the Amumu music video probably is the least sensical thing that the music team could have done. It was going from this huge, bombastic, uh, explosions everywhere, psychotic character to this really intimate story about one of our older, less realized characters. These guys are on the forefront of, of what Amumu is going to evolve into. They're running with a character. Music is actually leading the way. You know, the storytelling possibilities are really difficult because what defines Amumu? When Jinx came out, it had that purpose of showing everyone in the world who, who Jinx was and and hopefully stirring up a lot of excitement for the new champion. And Amumu really, he, you know, there's no release for him coming up. There isn't really any good reason to do anything for him, really. But he could have picked a bunch of different characters to sort of pursue this effort on. He picked Amumu because he loves Amumu. It's really just something that's born out of passion and by the understanding that whatever, whatever we're going to do for Amumu has the potential to be beautiful. The thing is, what I want to do right now, I want to take it away from just being a pop song. Right now, it kind of, it's pretty, but it's too, like, standard. It's, you know, it's very... It's not the most progressive verse, you know? I think it's more a passion to go out there and, like, and, and, find, and figure out new things, to, to kind of break rules. So, I guess the idea would be that it kind of starts out piano. And then... Um, and then... If you're trying to create something authentic, um, I think that, you know, you need to be understanding why you're making those decisions and not just sort of shooting them, you know, into the darkness. Then... Piano reduced with voice. Then piano, the pretty piano again with a violin on top. Then the second verse, I think, where drums come in. This is more resonance. Maybe. Yeah, that works the best. Sometimes we're not sure what style we want to do something, what kind of music we want to do for something specific, so we'll try different things and see what's best for what we're trying to achieve. Maybe like a cello in the background to just give it a little more volume. What did you have in mind for the, the singing part right here? Um, like kind of drastic moving around, like con conscious obviously. I feel like there is always like something that you can hone in on and sort of really make your own, whether it's in the production or just like the, you know, the actual musical notes. Minor or major? Major would be really cool if, like, if you're going to like a D major chord after that. Oh, that, that, that might work. You're personally invested in it. This is your statement of how you think things should sound.
Hey, Adam. Yeah. When I, can I fuck anything up on this yeah. thing here? No, right? No, we're not using any of that, so you're good to go. So we can I, even, like... Do -do -do. If you feel like it, <laughs> Who are you saying is a big deal? Randy Kerber is a big deal. The pianist. The pianist. Why do you say that? Oh, he's played on just about every John Williams score in the last, uh, I don't know, 25 years or so, and he's the Harry Potter Celeste, the very famous uh, theme for that. So he's, he's the shit. This is supposed to sound a little weird, like the Shaco character is being introduced at this point. You all know I'm a mediocre conductor, but we <laughs> try and go for the free time situation because we've had good musical results with that. We it's definitely it not some sequence. quick slap together thing. I mean, when it goes out the door and to the fans, like that's the end, you know, that's where it ends and it needs to be great. It's not just the game itself, but the whole culture around the game, I think, is in that soundtrack. With the soundtrack, we've been throwing an awesome softball from the guys upstairs, and they're like, well, just explore musically and see what happens. When you're working on movies or TV, you know, most of the time you're just doing it the way that'll get it done the fastest. We're gonna do something different at 71. Cool. Exploring ideas and seeing where they go and having the freedom to do that is something that's pretty rare, I think. Part of our role is to create an environment where it's safe to have crazy ideas. If uh, it's a conducting disaster or the time starts shifting and they notice the booth will go to place. But... Your speech is always so hopeful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I put some parts in there that I figured would be absolutely impossible to play. And <laughs> this might suck. <laughs> we'll just, you know, give it to him and see what he does. The biggest risk is not to take risk um, because it then it just funnels you to sound exactly as everybody would expect it to sound. So, uh, let's just try and make a take. Off we go. Zero, And I, I started my metronome at like 92, and the metronome marking is like 140, essentially. And the first day that I practiced it, I could only get it up to like 117. So like that night, I was all depressed, and then the next day, I'm like, okay, I'll try again. And I could only get it up to like 127. It was literally like, it took me like four days just to get it to the tempo, and then the whole rest of the time was like trying to played at that tempo without it sounding like I was like about to fall over. You're not failing, you're not trying hard enough, right? The vibe is what matters more than anything. We gotta go and get, capture the vibe. It's sort of an association does The character makes sense with the art, with the lore, and with the music. This is all one package. And if it does, then we've all done our job. And if it doesn't, we can improve on it. This soundtrack adds this really cool breadth to our world, a breadth of personalities and a, a breadth of places where the, all these characters are from. It's gonna be all those worlds collided into one soundtrack that we can listen to over and over again and then almost wonder like, my God, what could possibly be next? <laughs> Here's a little bit of Nami's theme on the piano. I think there are some definite coincidences between what what cues are on the soundtrack and like what our favorite characters are in general. I kind of pushed the agenda on Nami because I just I just love her as a character. And then here comes the flute. piano answers. We came to Quinn and was like, yeah, that's a pretty nice theme. I think we can do some damage with that. And then I was like, we're doing Nami. 
because I just love, I don't know, I just love Nami. I just, I think she's a well thought out character for people who enjoy the game like I do, who aren't frantic clickers, but I like to anticipate things in their style of playing. I've been here for about two and a half years now. I myself have been playing League of Legends for the last four years. When I look back, I sort of have these really great memories of, of certain champions that, that, come, that came out and that has resonated really well with me. And I think for many of our players, when they hear the NAMI soundtrack, when they hear that soundtrack, it's gonna take them back to that moment when they come home from work or from school they click open the game and the screen comes up and you hear you see a new champion and it's a mermaid. And you're like, whoa, it's a mermaid, and you hear this da -na 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 -na, right? It takes you back to those worlds, it takes you back to those memories. Like when I used to play Walk of Three when I was I don't know, like ten years ago or so, I, I always listened to certain music. And when I listen to that music nowadays, like it it pulls me back into this like is like this crazy feeling, really, really happy feeling. I love the Final Fantasy III music. Um, yeah, it's just fantastic. Like when that sting comes on, like when the -na 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 -na, like it just brings me back into like victory in battle, right? Our direction to Miranda Cumber, the wonderful pianist who played this, was to do. Um, to do some interesting piano wanderings. That's what I have it exactly notated as. And he naturally did a bunch of this stuff. And he, again, he's doing the wave motion. And later on, do I figure out, oh yeah, well that's a wave motion and she's the character from the ocean. So this kind of thinking, um, when, you're, when you're so familiar with a character, it just comes naturally, which is the cool thing about um, working on somebody that you, that you game on. You know, I always dread, when I start these projects, I always, I always dread the process of actually putting everything together because it's, I'm, like, I'm like always a little bit afraid of it because like the concept often is so strong and then the only thing that can fail is yourself in the execution, you know? There's that other section, right? The really sad one at some point with those different chords. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Fuck. There's gonna be this one moment where Mumu kind of, you know, has this huge tantrum. The visual, how I see it in the visual, he has to, he has to be like happy, you know. He ventures out and goes through the lands, and but he doesn't understand yet. He doesn't know. He looks at flowers and they're beautiful and everything is great and he has like hope. Oh, I'll find friends, you know. But in the music, it has to be a complete, really, really hard contrast of no, he will not. He realizes he's always going to be alone, he sees that he's cursed, that he'll never find a friend. You know, that's when he has his tantrum. Musically, it has to be the same feel, but it has to be amplified by like a million times. Now, are you imagining it to be big and sort of like kind of broad sounding or more big and kind of like a strident, aggressive sound? In five hours or so, we'll have to have those figured out. It needs something where we go, now he knows, fuck, you know? shitty. At Riot we always say that we built the plane mid-air. We had no choice but to get it rolling because the game grew so much that you had to react to to you know what our players would like to see and like and, and you can't just say nope sorry we'll just leave the game small you know. It has to be powerful and like yeah I don't know. I don't know. So, uh, yeah, kind of give me just a real quick overview, kind of sum it up if you can. Jesus. What do you think you were looking for? Yeah. Fuck. What's, what's your name? Cameron. Camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and then this trail out. Yep. Yeah, stuff like that, I think. Yeah, we'll do some takes like that, too, where we're just screwing around. Yeah. Screwing around is really not the right word. But playing around. Do magical things. Let's say playing around. This girl's from 1714. This studio doesn't sound half bad. Very 
spacey. Could be cool to do something really, you know. And realistic. that's not written out yet, right? No. Okay. This would just be whatever we want to do. Okay. You need the right kind of people, you know. Like if, like we all have the same goal. There's no ego involved. Also with the musicians, you know. All they want to do is create awesome music. But I'm, I'm kind of eager to see what he does in that violent section at the end. Yeah. There's so many people that care about this character very much, and there's so many elements to Umu that that matter. You can't just, you know, win. You can't just like write something real quick and then it's done. You have to figure it out. And these things are just not very easy to to get, you know, because they can just fuck up. All right, guys, we're gonna start recording in a moment, so. Here we go. Let's do it. So, uh, high low of the night, anyone can answer. Like, kind of lowest point, highest point. Have him try something else. Throw that away. Let's take 10. Okay, 13. Lucky 13. Let's keep, let's keep that and go to 14. Lucky 14. Lucky 14. Yeah. I feel like we, we have, like, between all those takes, um, we, we definitely have it, unless you want to do one more run, otherwise we can move on to the next so last two bars. Just one more time, I'd say. You think we have it? I think we have it, too. We can mess around with the click. Okay. Let's do another one. All right. Here we go. 45. Four, 45. Take 48. 52. Let's take 55. Take 56. What's the first one? One second. He can take this in a lot of different directions, I mean, stylistically. One more time. Take 62. Oh, you can throw that away. Too much movement? In the, in the first half. Okay. Yeah, in the first half, a little too much movement, I guess. Take 79. Can we do everything except the last two parts? I'm not a violinist, but that doesn't that doesn't seem right. Should I write this note, or should I not write this note? Should this note be an octave higher, or should it be loud, should it be quiet? If the goal is to create something new, then that's, you know, basically anything's fair game at that point. You were shooting into the darkness. Take 82. And thank you. One more time, please. Yeah, are you still running a little bit? You mean rushing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The attention that's paid on some of those songs, some of the tracks, we get obsessed over a little thing in a, in a song that needs to be right, and we just keep going. We just keep going and keep going. You want to do one more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just take 93 coming in. Fuck. It's a beautiful piece, and it's a beautiful piano melody, but there is something wrong about it. What do you want to do next? Um, Alex? I think we should, um, we're kind of running out of time. Let's yeah. move to the high glassy harmonics. Or unless you think that the uh, aggressive stuff is more important. So, where do you want to go? One second. Okay. Um, you know, let's do the aggressive stuff. So, starting at 103. That's when he has his tantrum. And so that moment's going to be tricky. Where, where, uh, where is that? It's, um, do you have it in front of you? It's so, 105. Where so, musically, it has to be yes. the same feel, but it has to be amplified by like a million times. Oh, no, it should. Where was that gonna, it, it, it needs to start it has, right on. It has okay. to, you know, like, now he knows. Fuck. Dig in. Yeah. Dig in. Yeah. Right. On the, when you come in on the 105, can you come in like on, already on like a bold double stop? Yeah, yeah. Trust is everything. If that trust isn't there, then it's just gonna be a huge clusterfuck. Here it is. are often not the pieces where someone sits down and plans it out, but it's just like it just comes streaming out of your heart. I remember what I said last time we recorded that he's the only guy that I ever heard that You can't go out and actively learn how to love something. It kind of chooses you and then you exist in its little world. Is it like, let me try something and it sounds dumb. We're all kind of together working on something here and that's kind of like the most rewarding part. <laughs> As cliche as it sounds, the team at the end of the day is like what wins the game.
is that even possible? How is that even possible? Sebastian, you have low point? The point was not having more time to record. Huh. Fuck, man. Do you have low point? I think you always question your own music when you have kind of people like that in the room. I have to change my song now. <laughs> I have to change my song. Can we mark that as the golden take of ever? Yeah, 75. If you have the trust in the relationships to where people are able to join these visions, you know? It, there's always 50 different ways to do it, you know? But it has to be a cohesive one direction where everything comes together and wants to achieve the same thing. And if you can achieve that, then the potential for your work is limitless. I wouldn't overdo it with the violin either, because I think that the cello has a lot to say. That's yeah. not your usual uh, no. session where just like, hey, read this. I was yeah. more like, hey, play like this. Play like play, weird shit. Play emotionally. Dude, that's cool. It's beautiful, man. It's emotional. Yeah. It, emotional. Dial, it dials it in a little bit with kind of what a Mumu is going through. Yeah. The tantrum. It's literally like a tantrum on the cello and like a tantrum on the violin. Yeah. I think I said it before, but if we create something that strikes this, this one certain note that reaches the the you know the people that love Amumu and 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 can kind of relate to how he is, um, to create this one connection that even no one else will understand. You know, if like ninety eight percent of a players don't get it, but the two percent that are totally ingrained with what Amumu is, totally get it, that's perfect, right? Yeah.